Everyone loves their grandparents, whether it's because they buy you things your parents refuse to buy or because of the love and affection they show towards you. I personally love mine because they care for me and cherish me with all of their hearts. Unfortunately, my mom's parents live in Scotland and I don't see them as much as I would like to. But when we do visit, it's the best holiday ever. My sister and I get spoiled with gifts and we eat the most delicious snacks. I love going shopping with my grandmother because we take the bus. The double-decker buses are the best. Afterwards, we always go to cafes and drink hot cocoa after being in the cold, miserable weather. We sometimes go to little farms in the countryside. I remember when I was small, we used to ride on a little train at one of the farms. When we do visit, it's usually during the Christmas time. My grandmother makes the most delicious Christmas lunch and we eat it with lots of gravy. Um, I love spending time with my grandparents. I make some of the most important memories there, like when I learned how to ride a bike and how to swing on monkey bars. Sometimes we don't visit them, but instead they visit us. I love it because we, we miss one or two days of school and go to nature reserves with them. Usually we go to Fufui and Flozi, but sometimes if they came during the school holidays, we went to Kruger and spent many nights there. Somehow, the British blood attracts all the mosquitoes, and I remember my grandparents and my mother having millions of bites everywhere, and my father, my sister, and I not having any. Three years ago, my dad's parents, my all my opa, sadly passed away. I miss them very much. I was very close with both of them, but especially my opa. They used to come to every single grandparents' day and enjoy them every time. Sadly, my grandmother was in a wheelchair and I couldn't spend as much time with her doing fun things as I would have loved to. Spending time with my cousins and grandparents at APN was something I always enjoyed doing. I remember the four of us, my sister and my cousins and I, hanging upside down from the railings. We used to go to my grandparents' friends' houses and ask for sweets and biscuits. My opa made the most delicious bread, but sadly, my mom cannot do it just as well as home. Next year is my grandfather's 80th birthday, and we are hoping that we'll be able to visit them and celebrate with him. I can't wait. Thank you. My grandparents are the best people I know. My grandpa turned 79 last week, and he still works out every single day in his personal gym in his basement. I can't even get myself into the mindset of working out. My grandma is the best baker I know. In the summer, she always makes delicious um, delicious strawberry cake when the strawberries grow fresh in her area. They are also the best welcoming committee. Every single time I come from the airport after my 11-hour flight, they welcome me with hugs and delicious smelling food. And the best of all, my grandma gives my brother and I both our own special packet full of chocolate, sweets, and other delicious stuff. Um, when, whenever we're there for Christmas, we go to the Christmas market and we usually walk around and buy nothing except for food. I have many good memories from when I was younger with my grandparents. Like when I was running around in the house, not looking where I was going, I ran straight into a wall and my tooth came flying out. That was the first tooth I've ever lost. I still remember running around, showing off the gap in my tooth and being so excited. There is a forest near my grandparents' house. We usually go for long, beautiful walks there, and I still remember when I was about five years old, my brother and I built a hut out of wooden sticks. Last year, when we went on another nice long walk, I saw the hut standing, still nice and strong, as if it was built yesterday. My grandma has one personality flaw. She's a little bit controlling and decides what you buy, when you eat, how much you eat, and when about you've had enough. She usually doesn't do what anyone else tells her to do, but does what she thinks is right or what she wants to do. But that doesn't matter. That's part of her personality and partly why I love her. 
My grandpa, on the other hand, is quiet and he usually doesn't try to do, get into any conflict and does what people ask him to. He is so incredibly kind and so patient. He has his own office. It's probably the coldest place in the house. But I still remember sneaking into there, stealing pieces of paper and drawing. I was always scared someone was going to catch me because I thought I was doing something wrong. My grandparents definitely played a large role into, in making me into the person I am today. I really hope they stay healthy and strong so we can make more memories together. I'm very grateful for them. There isn't really much to talk about except that my grandparents were the best people I knew. As a kid, I always thought I had seven grandparents, but now I know I actually have five. They are Oma and Opa, who are Hannah and Helmut Bruno Meyer, Nana and Grandad, who are Eva and Whitfield, um, Eva and Stan Whitfield, um, Grandma, who is Valerie Whitfield, and Lillian, Auntie Lillian and Uncle Gordon, who are Lillian and Gordon Pa, who I must who I mistook to be my grandparents, but still think of them in that group. Um, Oma and Opa. Not to say they were in the running, but they were up there. Oma and Opa were, had 50 good years with each other and uh, had eternal love for each other. Besides the five-car drive there and back, I was very fond of them. I remember how my parents and their siblings would always send photos of them to each other to make each other jealous. That was always really funny. Oma always knew how to beat the parents at their own game. And uh, when my parents told me they had to ask Oma if it was okay to have seconds or thirds, I knew there was no doubt I was going to get seconds or thirds. Oma always enjoyed enjoyed our company and whenever we arrived she op she came with open arms. She always wanted to be around us and when she wasn't she felt kind of, well, she always wanted to be there with us. Um, Opa on the other hand was slightly menacing to the size of a five-year-old. He always gave me warnings about shooting the pellet gun and when people were walking past and carving stuff out of wood to not cut myself. He was always there for me, or when he needed me. I was always running back and forth with a cold milk stout in my hand because he asked me to go fetch one. They were a good part of my life till last year when they both passed away. Nana and Grandad. They were together for a long time, even before I was born. And besides the one hour car drive there to Untunzini, they played a huge role in my life. Grandad, who I only knew till I was five, was always like a joker to me and always played little games with me. I remember the carving stuff out of wood to not cut myself. He was always there for me, or when he needed me. I was always running back and forth with a cold milk stout in my hand because he asked me to go fetch one. They were a good part of my life till last year when they both passed away. Nana and Grandad. They were together for a long time, even before I was born. And besides the one hour car drive there to Untunzini, they played a huge role in my life. Grandad, who I only knew till I was five, was always like a joker to me and always played little games with me. I remember the huge house he used to have and all the little funny ornaments he had around it. I actually learned later that he was quite a serious person, but try to be as fun as possible around me. Nana, who was always in the background, was always there for me. If I needed something, I can go and ask her. I could go and ask her, but didn't really have to. She just knew what I needed by looking at me. Thereafter, it was like, where are the presents? And... She was also the only person who knew where the sweets were, and I tried to control her. Now living in Stuttgart in Germany, I barely get to see her, but at least she's still there. Grandma. 
She always tried to visit us every year because she was very close to my mother. She would always bring like special sweets from England and I would always try and eat them very slowly. I think the longest time I made one of them last was at least an hour, but now I can do two with a small bar one. I remember every time she came, we always went to the beach because she loved it, even if it was winter. I remember her with her sun hat and sunglasses reading a book on the beach or lying on the sand trying to get a tan. She also always wanted to explore the area around us and we'd go walking down the beach front of him for us. On the beach front she would always like to look at restaurants. My grandparents will always be a special part of me, dead or alive, because they'll always be beside me in my treasured memories. They will go on to form my life ahead as I try to be as funny, as determined, as safe, as helpful and as sunny as they were. Oma and Opa, Nana and Grandad, Grandma, there are no not an amount there's no amount of words that can describe describe how much I love you. My grandparents. My grandparents are among the most important people in my life. I've only ever known three out of my four grandparents, Oma and Opa Depper and Oma Lenchen von Deft. Unfortunately, my opa Christoph died before I was born. From what I've heard, he was an extroverted, fun-loving person. I was often described as being the life and soul of every gathering. I wish I had met him. It sounds like I missed out on a lot of fun. I wasn't as close to all my Lentian as I am to my depot grandparents. She lived in Stellenbosch and I only saw her when she came to visit us when we flew down to see her. She unfortunately passed away in 2018. Oma Lentian lived in a small house in a retirement complex in Stellenbosch. It was lovely there and I miss it. I miss Oma Lentian very much. Like me, she was introverted and didn't talk much, but she wasn't shy. From what I've heard and seen in old pictures, Oma Lentian was really good at gymnastics. I've also tried it but broke my nose in the process and I've given it up as a bad idea. It's hard to believe that my frail grandmother could do gymnastics. Oma Lentian was also very clever. In her final matric examinations, she was placed in the top 10 of the Western Cape. My Opa Deppa is exceptionally fond of dogs. He secretly feeds our Corgi Nala yummy morsels from the dinner table. She adores Opa. Nala knows exactly how to charm him. She puts a pointy nose between his knees and looks up at him with huge adoring eyes. It's not surprising that Opa simply cannot resist. What I enjoy most about my Opa is his ability to bring alive our dog's characters. He loves to narrate a dog's behavior and gives them human thoughts and attributes. This makes it feel like our family pets aren't just animals, but real family members with quirky personalities. One of my favorite memories of Opa is of him feeding grated cheese to the birds in his garden. A regular visitor was a little bird that had lost its claws and hobbled around on stumps. Opa called him Oscar, named after the notorious Blade Runner. I was quite young then and didn't understand the joke, but now I do and I find it hilarious. Unfortunately, we haven't seen Oscar in a long time. In my early childhood, when we went to visit Oma and Opa, Opa would always go to spa and buy us a box of Smarties. What happened to this ritual, Opa? I certainly haven't outgrown Smarties yet, and I never will. My Oma is always kind and caring. I have never seen her angry. Although, I have heard that she has a bit of a naughty streak, one that allegedly involves fireworks in the neighborhood and dogs subsequent revenge. The details don't really matter. Oma bakes the best bread that I've ever eaten. We give it the most unique name. Oma Brot! Whenever we go visit Opa and Oma, there are one or two steaming loaves waiting, ready to be devoured. Oma also always has a packet of instant pudding or jelly in the cupboard, ready to be made. 
We've always loved baking and making sweet delicacies with Oma since we were small. Oma is also very good at sewing and knitting. She's taught me how to knit, but embarrassingly, I've since forgotten how. After Oma Lentian passed away, Oma used the wool that was found in Oma Lentian's house and made a crocheted blanket from it for me to remember her by. The blanket is very special to me since it is something that I own that will always remind me of both my special grandmothers. In summary, I have amazing grandparents and couldn't wish for any better. I know this sounds cliched, but there's no other way to say it. Mine are simply the best. Thank you for everything you've done for me, Orpa and Oma, and thank you for all the love you give me. Orpa, have I earned my Smarties now? Today I'll be talking about my Oma on my dad's side of the family and my grand and grandpa on my mom's side. My Oma passed away in 2014, which pulled us all into a period of grief and mourning. But enough about sad stuff. She was the one that bought me my very first and second bicycles. I clearly remember coming around the corner one day, pushing a black bicycle and telling me that if I rode it enough, the front wheel would turn green, which eventually it did. She never lied. She would also come around to our house every Sunday for lunch, and she was the one that taught my mother how to make some of the best chicken gravy I've ever tasted. As I said, I was very sad when she passed. Now on to my current grandparents. They used to live in Hillcrest, but now they live in Waterfall. They love playing balls. They play in Hillcrest and usually win prizes that mainly consist of steak. Don't ask why. My gran has the best luck at winning raffles. Last year she put in two entries and won. This year, same story. It's nice because she always shares her winnings with us. My gran really does cook some of the best beef pot roast. She is also not shy on the gravy. Two years ago, Tegan, my sister and I, would go around to her house every Wednesday and occasionally play board games, but we mostly just played outside. My grandpa really is the king of crosswords. Sometimes I look at the questions and then at his answers and think, how on earth did he know that? He is also a research chemist, technically like a scientist, and is exceptionally clever. I love my grand and grandpa because I know them very well and they are very kind to me. It has been very hard for me not being able to see them very much during the period of COVID-19. Uh, hopefully I will know them until I die, which is unlikely because that would make them about 140 to 150 years old. I love them so much and they mean so much to me. And I'm very lucky to still have them around. Thank you. My grandparents mean the world to me. I still have all my grandparents and I'm very happy about that. My grandparents on my mom's side are English and on my dad's side they are German. My granny and my grandpa live in Durban with my cousins. They rent a flat from them. Whenever I visit my cousins, I can also visit my grandparents. It's two for the price of one. My granny and my grandpa have a box of sweets in their cupboard that is always full. My cousins and I always ask my grandpa if we can have some and the answer is always yes. My granny makes the best truffle and my grandpa makes the best stew. My grandpa sometimes gets forgetful. And when he asks us for something, he calls us random names. He also comes up with the funniest rhymes with our names. Some of the random names he calls us are Fortescue and Gertrude. Whenever my grandparents go somewhere on holiday, they always bring something home for us. My granny likes to bake. She bakes us meringues and very, very yummy biscuits. She also makes cakes with melted chocolate on top as I sing. Whenever we go to my grandparents' house for supper, my gran always makes extra food in case we brought a friend with us. Funny my mom and I go, she always sends some food home for my dad. My grandparents are very generous. All of my grandparents are. My oma and opa live in a complex in Peter Maritzburg called the Lutheran Gardens. It is right next to a church so they can walk to church. Whenever we go to visit, we always go for a few days because they live quite far away. When we go, we, all, we also always take our dogs along because they love my opa a lot. At home, we sometimes tease our dogs by asking them, Vos opa? 
they always go mad. Their tails start wagging a lot. When we go to Opa and Oma's house, my cousin Anya usually also goes. Oma also loves to bake. She bakes Jerobskuchen, Bienenstich and custard slices. They are so delicious. All my grandparents give the best hugs. My Oma does this thing with Kai, Anya and me where we squeeze each other on the arm three times. It means I love you. We do it every time we see her. My Opa is very funny and he loves Biltong. When he has Biltong and the dogs are with him, he always shares his Biltong with the dogs. Opa is very practical. He can fix anything like washing machines, geysers, lawnmowers and cars. When we visit them after a long trip in the car, we have lunch. A delicious roast with the best gravy ever. My gran tells the best stories, especially of her childhood. My oma also tells very funny stories. All my grandparents are Christians and my granny and grandpa both still work as preachers, even though many people at their age are retired. My grandparents make me feel loved. That is one thing um, all grandparents can give at any time. It is the best gift ever. I love my grandparents so, so much. Dear grandparents, I remember the first time I met you. When I was a baby, you welcomed me into your warm hearts. Although I can't remember a lot about you, I still remember you always played with me and all, you were always there for me and you always invited us to your house some mornings for waffles. I remember you inviting us to your birthday party to celebrate it and we gave you a lot of presents. You grandparents really brought the best out of me. You always organized things for us. You were always there for us, even through tough times. I would like to thank you for everything you have done for us, and we love you for that. Thanks. To the best grandparents in the world, Joni, Grandpa, Oma, and Opa, you have all been amazing to me and supported me my whole life. I can't imagine anything without you. Opa, I used to love coming to your house and playing tennis and swimming in the pool with you. You always make it very exciting and I really enjoy playing with you because you make everything fun because you're so good at it. You have helped us learn and grow from when we were young. I love going to the shops with you and Oma because we can always stick a chocolate or something delicious into your trolley without you noticing. The best part of it is that Oma just laughs. Oma, I certainly think you're the best bicycle rider with your handlebars backwards. I don't, I don't think anyone could do a whole bike ride like that. Whenever we come to your house, there is always a box of Croker Pops and a jar of Nutella in the cupboard. And we devour the whole, the whole thing while our parents aren't there. You don't mind though because you always, because you always give us more. I love playing top schlag with you and getting the Easter egg underneath. It's always so much fun. Thank you. Joni, I don't know how I could ever repay you for all the 5,000 chocolates we have gotten from you. But you still don't think you've done enough and there's always a faster underneath our pillow whenever we come and stay with you. Your homemade food is even better though. I can't, I can't stop wanting to make your famous brownies because they are so delicious. My favourite thing is when most of the family comes down for comrades and you make the most delicious bowl of pasta. Our family usually isn't too early for things, except when you're with us. You always, make, you always get us everywhere extremely early for a change, which is a miracle and I don't know how you do everything as well as you do. You're amazing. Grandpa, thanks for always being the strict one in your house. I have no clue what mischief we would have gotten up to if it weren't for you stopping us or us being afraid you might catch us. I love playing bird bingo with you whenever, we, whenever you come to our house to stay. It's always so fun and exciting, although I think you are by far best out of anyone and you always win. Whenever we come to your house, I love getting up early with you and putting bird seed and, seed and fruit out for the birds. Thank you for always having time for us and doing all these things with us. One thing I've learned very well from the time with from the time I've spent with you is that you should never leave your best food on your plate for last because it'll always be gone in about a second after you turn around. It's on grandpa's plate. Thank you for everything. I love you all so much. I only have two grandparents left, one from my dad's side, Sandy, and one from my mom's side, Edna. If I could, I would tell you all the best memories I had with my grandparents, but obviously I wouldn't have enough time, so I only took the best of the best. One of my grannies lives nearby and the other one far away. 
My grandparents, <laughs> they live nearby, live in Hillcrest, and have the most spectacular house. There are endless options of things to do there. One of my favorite is to climb the tree and pick avocados. And at the Comrades, we sell them and earn some money. My grandparents can cook very well, and normally after supper, we have dessert. Sadly, a few years ago, my grandpa passed away, and now my granny lives in the big house all by herself. My other grandparents live, lived in Port Edward until my grandpa died. Then my granny moved to Pretoria. But I can still remember some of the adventures we had at the old house, and I will share some with you. I can still remember so clearly when we fed the monkeys oranges through the burglar bars, and they were lining up behind each other on the branch of the tree. On a Saturday morning, our granny invited us to go for a walk at a small nature reserve down the south coast. It was a very hot day, especially in the car. Every few minutes we would hear my granny's GPS called Tom Tom screaming out directions. When we arrived there, we saw lots of monkeys digging in the rubbish bins. We started walking at late, uh, um, late morning and we were heading for a picnic spot. Our granny would tell us lots of stories of when she was still young. My granny spotted lots of animals such as giraffe, zebra, and eagle, and much more. After about an hour's walk, we all needed the toilet, and my granny suggested the best spot would be the bushes. We all had our turn, and when I had my turn, someone shouted, Snake! and I quickly hopped back out of the bushes. We walked for about another 100 meters until we came to a bathroom with toilet paper. Then uh, there was a a picnic spot nearby and my granny had all the best food and most of it was my favorite. After spoiling ourselves with amazing food we decided to go back home. It wasn't that easy because some of the signs didn't make any sense like in 1000 kilometers you'll reach the exit and my granny's legs were getting pretty sore. Sadly we didn't bring Tom Tom the GPS. On our way back, we saw massive trees and abandoned houses. When we arrived back at the car, we were all very tired and desperate to get home. I think we all know that that was probably going to be our last trip to the nature reserve for a very long time. Every time I see my grandparents, I get a gift. Not always wrapped in wrapping paper, but sometimes just a hug, and that's just as special. I miss my grandparents so much, and I hope to see them soon.